For my thoughts on all the latest happenings in the NFL in a completely relaxed, unscripted format, be sure to check out my channel, JG9 News. And now, on with our feature presentation. McDonald's is basically synonymous with America at this point. It is maybe the most recognizable company in the world when it comes to the logo and what the Golden Arches mean. A study done about 25 years ago found that more people recognize the Golden Arches and know what that means than the cross, meaning that McDonald's is more well recognized than Jesus Christ himself. With over 36,500 locations around the world and over 14,000 locations in the United States alone, McDonald's is a revenue-pumping machine that most Americans have had at least once in their lives. You've definitely passed by McDonald's at some point. And whether you recognize it or not, you've definitely seen ads for McDonald's in your life. Whether it's their iconic jingle, or even just seeing Ronald McDonald or characters like the Hamburglar and Grimace. However, for the most part, McDonald's is a pretty low-income job. It's a minimum wage job at most positions that averages somewhere in the ballpark of $30,000 per year. It is not the highest paying job by any means, and it is not a job that many people aspire to have. At the very least, it's not a job that you expect a player in the NFL to have while he's playing in the NFL. Well, this man right here is a running back on the San Diego Chargers by the name of Rod Bernstein, and in 1991, he wasn't just a notable player in the National Football League who was bowling over defenders left, right, and center. He was also an employee at McDonald's. How the heck did this come to be? Why was a starting running back who seemed to be in a really good spot financially and was busy enough as it was being an NFL player, working the cashier and working the drive through for America's most prominent fast food chain? Well... It had to do with a bet gone horribly, horribly wrong. It had to do with a bet that made Bernstein look, shall we say, da 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 dum And we're going to take a deep dive into that today. Because this is the story of the time that an NFL player worked at McDonald's. Before I talk about the employment in question and the bizarre partnership between the Chargers running back at McDonald's, we need some context to understand just who Rod Bernstein himself was, and the team he was playing on, because they were not exactly the greatest football club out there. The year is 1991, and this man right here, Rod Bernstein, is one of the most unique runners in all of football. As you're watching these highlights, you're probably thinking to yourself, wait a second, why the heck is he wearing number 82? Can running backs even wear the number 82 jersey? Isn't that reserved for wide receivers and tight ends? Better yet, why the heck does he look like a tight end? And that's because, well, he started off his career with the Chargers in 1987 as a tight end, but really transitioned to getting a running back's workload in 1990, when after just 18 carries in his first three seasons, he had 124 to start off the new decade. He didn't have to change his number because he was grandfathered in by virtue of staying on the same team leading to a bizarre situation that we might never see again of a running back wearing the number 82 jersey. But make no mistake about it, Rod Bernstein was a very good runner who was almost impossible to bring down, as you can imagine, due to his size. For some perspective on how good he was, during that 1990 season, he had 589 rushing yards and 4 touchdowns on 4.8 yards per carry, and he followed that up in 1991 with another highly efficient campaign, running the ball 159 times for 766 yards and 8 touchdowns on 4.8 yards per carry. This meant that in 1990 and 1991, he not only had over 100 rushing attempts, but he had at least 4.8 yards per carry in both of them, well above the league-wide average. The only other player to do that in that stretch? That was future Hall of Fame running back, and maybe the best runner in football at the time, Buffalo Bills running back Thurman Thomas. When you're in a group of two, and the only other person in that club is one of the best to ever do it, yeah, you're doing something right. Rod Bernstein was a heck of a player in his prime, and was extremely versatile, and could take over a game at any moment. Ask fans of the Kansas City Chiefs or the Miami Dolphins about that, and they'll tell you the same thing. 
Rod Bernstein was, simply put, a bright spot on the Chargers. Which was good, because the Chargers freaking sucked back then. Yes, the San Diego Chargers were an abomination of a football team for most of Bernstein's time with the team, and despite going 6-10 in each of the past three seasons, never really putting up any sort of fight, 1991 was shaping up to be the worst year of the bunch. Through the first four weeks, the Chargers started the season with an 0-4 record. Things were so bad that after the first week of the season, which was a loss to the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Chargers fired their offensive coordinator, with head coach Dan Henning firing offensive coordinator Ted Tolner after a grand total of one game. You can learn more about that debacle by clicking the card in the upper right corner. Through the first four weeks, the Chargers, having lost to Pittsburgh, San Francisco, Atlanta, and Denver, had the fourth worst point differential in football, the third worst defense in football, and had the lead in the second half for zero out of a possible 120 minutes. That's right, not once did the Chargers actually have a second half lead. Their season was basically over after one month, considering the fact that no team had ever made the playoffs following an 0-4 start. Yes, I realize the grand irony in that, considering what would happen the following year in 1992 with the Chargers. But for the most part, that was the prevailing thought in 1991, and it's not hard to see why. Bernstein was playing well and was doing all that he could. Through the first four games of the season, Bernstein had 304 yards rushing on 5.3 yards per carry, including a 103-yard performance in Week 4, his most recent outing, against the divisional rival Denver Broncos. He was ninth in the league in rushing yards, and among players with 50 or more rushing attempts, he was third in the league in yards per carry, only behind two future Hall of Famers in Thurman Thomas and Emmett Smith. Again, Bernstein was a good player for a crappy team, but even he wasn't enough to salvage San Diego's season. And with that in mind, prior to their Week 5 game against the Kansas City Chiefs, this man right here, Rod Bernstein, was extremely frustrated with how this season was going, and it's not exactly hard to see why. It's tough to do much worse through four weeks than 0-4, while also firing your offensive coordinator after one game. I know that no one's made the playoffs after starting 0-4 at this point, but this year in the AFC, it's not entirely out of the realm of possibility. If there was ever a year to do it, this was the year. Six teams in each conference make the playoffs, and through four weeks, only three teams even had a winning record. So there was a sliver of hope to salvage your season, even if you dug yourself into a pretty big hole. But if you lose this game and start 0-5, yeah, you're done. Dead in the water for real. Forget about it. Bernstein knew the importance of the game coming up against Kansas City. Not just for the divisional aspect and the rivalry aspect, but for the aspect of just trying to get a win and attempt to salvage their season, whatever the heck was left of it. With that, Bernstein went on a local radio station by the name of Q106, which today, you might know as KLNV. And he made a, shall we say, interesting proposition with the DJs there. We don't know how this came about, or what the heck prompted Bernstein to say this, but from all accounts, it seemed to be completely unprovoked. Because why the heck would something like that even come up? Better yet, how the heck would something like this even come up? Bernstein said that if the Chargers didn't win this game, he was going to work at McDonald's. Seriously. If the Chargers remain winless by the end of September, he would work for 25 hours at the local McDonald's. Now this raises a few questions. Number one, isn't this a bit insulting to the people who actually work at McDonald's? Like, if I lose this game, I'll do this quote-unquote poor person's job and work in these horrible conditions and flip burgers? Doesn't this feel degrading to the people who actually work there? Almost like those celebrity videos where they pick up a shift at a fast food place and they just make a mockery of it? Well, oddly enough, no. Because Bernstein actually was fairly financially savvy and had planned to invest in some McDonald's restaurants. Bernstein was born in California, but he grew up and spent his formative years in Texas. He went to high school in Texas and played collegiate ball at Texas A&M. So Bernstein was planning on investing in some McDonald's in his de facto home state. I guess this was a way to see what the working conditions were like 
so he know what to do when he eventually invested in some franchises. But that brings up point number two. If that was the case, why wouldn't he just do this anyway? Why did he need the incentive of losing the game to work there? If I lose this game, I'm going to punish myself by working at McDonald's. But it's not really a punishment, because I want to invest in McDonald's and be a part of the company at some point. But I'm only doing this if I lose the game. I'm going to punish myself by doing something that I was thinking about doing anyways. Does that seem a bit odd to anyone else? Like, doesn't this seem like really backwards logic no matter how you want to slice it? Either it's insulting to the people that work at McDonald's, or it just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Either way, we now know the stakes for this scheme right here on September 29th in Week 5 between the San Diego Chargers and the Kansas City Chiefs. If Rod Bernstein wins the game, not only do his Chargers finally get in the win column and possibly have a shot at being in the thick of things in a super weak AFC, but he doesn't have to spend his off day working at McDonald's. If Rod Bernstein loses this game, not only do his Chargers continue their slide and stake their claim for being the worst team in football, but on Tuesday, October 1st, he has to pick up a shift at Mickey D's. The good news for Bernstein was that he played well during this game. Once again, you could not blame Bernstein whatsoever for the Chargers and their performance, as he was lights out running for 112 yards and a touchdown, while also picking up a 22-yard reception. Chiefs head coach Marty Schottenheimer had nothing but praise for Bernstein after the game, saying on his output, Rod Bernstein is just an outstanding player. He's got a tremendous ability to spring off the line and into a hole for a man of his size. Even one of his teammates said it best, with H-back Craig McEwen saying on Bernstein at his performance, What more can we ask him to do? The only other things are flying and walking on water. Maybe we'll ask him to do those next. However, as you can tell from these highlights of the game, or lowlights if you're a Charger fan, despite Bernstein's great game, and despite Bernstein picking up 134 yards from scrimmage, the Chargers fell to 0-5 and lost the game, dropping it by a final score of 14-13. It was yet another game where the Chargers never held the lead, and never held it during the second half. When you look at the box score, it doesn't make sense why the Chargers lost this game. They outgained the Chiefs 311-182 in total yardage. They had five more first downs than them, and they held onto the ball for 33 minutes, winning the time of possession battle fairly easily. However, two first half touchdowns by Kansas City, with one coming on a run by Christian Okoye, and the other coming on a pass from Steve DeBerg to Rob Thomas, proved to be the difference. And what this meant was that not only did the Chargers remain winless, but it meant that Rod Bernstein, despite his best efforts, would now be working at McDonald's. And I want to make this clear. This was not some offhand comment and joke that Bernstein said in an interview that I'm reading way too much into more than three decades later. No, he actually worked at McDonald's. As Bernstein said, gaining over 100 yards doesn't mean anything if you lose. Yeah, I said I'd do it, so now, I've gotta go down there and put on the uniform and everything. I'm sure a lot of the guys are gonna be coming down there to get a hamburger from me. We don't have any photos or videos of Bernstein working at McDonald's, but he stuck to his words somewhat. He actually worked at McDonald's. He didn't work 25 hours there over the course of the season, but two days after the loss to the Chiefs, Bernstein did pick up a 90-minute shift and the word got out around town that Bernstein was working there, which led to some hilarious results. As Bernstein said, I asked them what they wanted, and they'd say, a win. I said, could I take your order, please? And they'd say, yeah, we like a win. For 90 minutes, at least, Rod Bernstein was the most popular McDonald's employee in the country. Now, I dug high and low to see what happened to Rod Bernstein after this game, to see if he actually bought McDonald's franchises down in Texas like he was thinking about doing, but I couldn't find anything. There were no newspaper articles, no quotes, there's no online footprint whatsoever of this. He's got no LinkedIn, he's got nothing online to suggest that he ended up doing this, so I've honestly got nothing. If anyone knows, let me know in the comments down below if you have any information, because I'm fascinated by this. My educated guess is that he didn't do this, and maybe this changed his mind. 
Maybe picking up that 90 minute shift ended up changing his mind on deciding to invest in McDonald's. I have no clue, but I couldn't find anything. Also, you might notice the case behind me right here. I've got the Chargers in there for obvious reasons, because that was a team that Bernstein played for. But what does the bottom row represent? What do those helmets on the bottom row represent? If you think you know, let me know in the comments down below. It has to do with something in our story today. I know there's a running joke to disregard the stats of players from other eras by saying that they went up against McDonald's drive through workers and cashiers. But in 1991, opposing defenses in the NFL quite literally went up against a McDonald's drive through worker and cashier. Rod Bernstein would have a fairly solid nine-year career in the NFL with the San Diego Chargers and the Denver Broncos. But today, outside of the bizarre image of having a tight end playing running back, he might be best known not for what he did on the field, but rather for what he did off of it as a McDonald's worker. Because in 1991, when the Chargers started the season 0-5, I think it's safe to say that Rod Bernstein was not loving it. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.